Welcome back, Artemers. How we doing? Hope you guys are having a glorious day. Today we're going to be talking about two modes of consciousness. Are going to be habitual and meta and then habitual is gonna be stuff like doing dishes dancing drawing watching movies when you're really really into it and then the meta state or the meta mode is gonna be when you're analyzing things thinking about the process breaking stuff down in your head like doing that like kind of next level thinking mm -hmm. in comparison yeah versus like oh drawing a picture when you know where all the lines go because it either is like a doodle or you're good at drawing enough it's more about like mowing the lawn relaxing things would be habitual not always and not all of them but like a lot of relaxing things would be habitual things so like in the movie handsome handsome was talking to the actor and he was all talking about his movie when he was a little boy and it's just like it seemed like you wanted to be acting but you were actually just acting and I was just like oh major burn right there like when you're dancing with a girl and you're thinking about dancing, it's probably going to be a lot more awkward than it was if you were being in the habitual state. There isn't a better one. The things you're doing, there's a better one. Oh. Like, if you're trying to build something, you should probably continue to be in the meta state. Mm. Uh, if you're painting a house, you should probably just stay in the habitual state. I'm pretty sure anyone could agree if they think about it. The habitual state is when time goes by fast. Oh, yeah. And the for meta sure. state is when it goes by slow. Super duper slow. Another example is in a new movie. It's called The Seven Stages to Get to Blissful <laughs> Eternity or some craziness. Uh, anyways, it's great and it's got Dan Harmon in it. And there's this super hilarious scene where he made a joke and then someone else was laughing like five minutes later and someone like else like ten seconds someone else started laughing and then Dan Harmon's just like comedy's an instinct you don't just laugh when other people do and then my last example is from one of my favorite movies called The Stuff it's from the 80s and it's a super classic anyways the little kid in it, who is like one of the main characters, to his parents and his brother and like everyone else in town, he's like, don't you guys just think about what you're eating? That's so disgusting. It's moving. What is this? Whereas everyone else in the movie is just in that habitual state of, oh, new product? Yum yum. Buy it up. Deliciousness. Yeah, simple thoughts. This is good. So what it really boils down to here is that the habitual state is our autopilot, our human autopilot mode. And then the meta state is the analysis mode, like we were saying before. I literally, when my professor was talking about this, I was like, this is why I can't get drunk. There's no autopilot when you're a crazy, paranoid person. <laughs> Just crazy, awkward people. They can't act naturally. You know, go with the flow. Autopilot. Small talk. I think that's honestly a skill right there. Habitual mindset. Speak to somebody. Whereas, like, nerds and other people are, like, what do I say next? Uh, oh, what are they going to think of me if I say this? Or... You're a nerd. 
I'm a nerd. It's true. You're a nerd. I'm a big nerd. So the word that Husserl or Heidegger uses when talking about the spark in between and moving from habitual to the meta state, from autopilot to like analyzing what you're doing, is intentionality. Intentionality is when you are reflecting on a habit, when you are doing something in autopilot mode. Like drawing. Like right. drawing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Some things I have written, for example, is like when you have a mistake, like when you're tying your shoes just habitually, and then suddenly there's a giant knot from the chaos of the universe, and then you're like, do I even know how to tie my shoes anymore? <laughs> Another example is sudden paranoia. Like when you have a girlfriend and she's got like maybe some stuff lying around and then suddenly you're like, she's cheating on me. Oh. Some stuff lying around? Yeah, I couldn't think of a single thing. <laughs> Another example is disappointment. Uh, like when you're just habitually cooking up some eggs and for some reason the burner was on too high. You burnt your eggs and you're highly disappointed. Highly. <laughs> and you, you question yourself. A sudden realization is my next example. And all of these go into wanting a change. And pretty much this is to go back to the habitual state and to just fix the issue. Or what Heidegger says, how we do things. And so that's just it. If you're tying your shoe, you're going to question, how did I do that? If you're cooking eggs, you're going to question, how did I do that? What's going on? What do I need to change to just get back to being on autopilot and not thinking about it anymore? Oh, one of my favorite examples that my professor said for intentionality was so spot on the nose, something that happened in my life, and that is fashion. So intentionality in fashion is when you realize for the first time in your life that you can pick out your clothes and you can pick out what you want to wear. I remember the exact point of my life in which this happened, and I was in fifth grade, and I was all like, I want to wear all black. <laughs> and so I picked through all of my all black clothes, like a t-shirt and jeans, you know, just ran from there. As you can see, that has yet to change because that's, it's just that I went back to the habitual state. It's like a different version of the same thing. Yeah. I did the like, exact same thing. I swear to God, it was like fifth grade that I was like, I like the way Rodney Mullen dresses in the 90s, which is like super baggy blue jeans, but not baggy baggy. But he's a skateboarder. He's now a motivational speaker. And then after a while, I just kind of got into, I don't really care what I wear again. I have to like pick out every single piece and analysis Lee. Because I can't get back to that habitual state of just picking out things. I'm constantly thinking about what I buy. I live in the meta state. How about that? I'm, I feel like I'm habitual most of the time. We haven't even brought up the biggest autopilot of all, which is, I'll put this in like capital letters, the freaking scroll of the internet. People live in the scroll. It is synonymous with autopilot. I recently succumbed to the scroll because of Reddit. But I analyze what they're doing. It's That's the difference. Is yeah. Are you analyzing? Yeah, are you analyzing or are you scrolling? When it's like, awesome, 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 right? That's, that's what the scroll is. Like I'm a zombie. Absorbing. <laughs> absorbing, yeah. Right? I feel like all of this kind of uh, boils itself down to exactly what I always like to talk about, which is consumerism, 
which is terrible. And we could even bring our boy Ralph Nader into this and say that people don't analyze what they're buying. I'd say the real difference is people who feel the need to, in the sense of habitual meta. I would say that advertisements and such definitely like play into our subconscious when we are like in that habitual state of being a consumer where when they tell us to go get a new phone we're just gonna do it not me (laughs) yeah no not me i think about literally everything i buy i think what sucks is when you compare like consumerism to capitalism the people up top making big bucks All of their stuff, like at Whole Foods, are made out of really fantastic ingredients. But all of the people on the middle class and the lower and the working class, they're gonna buy things from like Meijer and Walmart, which could not have the best ingredients. Like, if you buy the lowest of the low tier food. While some of these people can think and go to a meta state of analysis, and think about what they're buying, they can't afford to go and buy the actual things that are good for them. Because that's what freaking sucks about America. You can't can't break capitalism. Just because you realize you live in a crap world, you can't buy up to be better. But like, eat my shorts, bud. Because there's freaking billions of people in one country, America. Yeah, yeah. And that's why awesome people like Ralph Nader want to fight for the little man who, even if they aren't in the meta level of consciousness, could still buy good food and good products. There's terrible, terrible things in lotions, shaving creams, and it's like you don't want to put that in your mouth, on your body, in your air, in your hair. Don't do it. But people don't know otherwise. The normal layman isn't a scientist. We can't even begin to analyze and be in the analysis state of what we're putting in our bodies. Yeah. Uh, I've seen that there's a post, he's like, this, this is what's in a vaccination. And so, like, everyone's like, yeah, what is this? I don't even know what this is. This is crazy. They're putting this in our body, and it's like, it's an apple. Joke, yolk's on you. You know? But, like, you don't know it, you know? What, are you going to read the back of your Febreze can and know what that those things are? What I really wanted to talk about was the mystery slasher horror movies because they're freaking amazing. And what I mean by that specifically is when you're pretty much guessing who the murderer is the entire time. Most of the time when you're watching a movie, you're just like watching it, you know, people falling in love, haha, jokes, and all funny goodness. Plot. Plot. Um, But then other times, you get to be Sherlock Holmes, and that's kind of my favorite. And it's like a mixture of both the habitual and the meta state in itself, I think. Because you're watching a movie, and you're really into it, just like you would on autopilot. But at the same time, you're completely analyzing, but as a character would. Not necessarily uh, analysis of the movie, like the special effects and the actors acting. No, 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 no. Because when you do that, and you're looking at dead bodies in 1985 movies... <laughs> and they're just breathing <laughs> they're so just... heavy. <laughs> they're not alive. You can't think about that, no. And so that's why the horror mystery slasher franchise, whole entire cult, classic, everything, they're the best. They're 100% the best movies. Because you get to be guessing alongside the characters who the murderer is the entire time. Yeah. It's like you're in a freaking. you're the detective, you're Sherlock Holmes, you know? Yeah. Like, student bodies, Clue, all those types of movies are awesome. 
I think really good movies in general are movies that have you analyzing. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's true engagement. Yeah, but not in a way where you're, like, analyzing the acting, like I was saying before. Yeah, that's not what you want. No. You do not want people to be doing no. that. You're given clues to try to, and there's context, and you're trying to figure something out. Yeah, yeah. Instead of just sit there and, like... Yeah, oh my gosh, like, Netflix's new Hubie Halloween. It's so, so freaking good. Literally, we saw the trailer, and then we watched it. It was great. (laughs) So, when you apply this to intentionality, and the killer is your subject of your intention, basically, you're in the spark of intentionality, throughout the, the entireness of watching the film. And that's why it's my favorite. Yeah, that's very better than just sitting back and watching Jason Voorhees chase people until they trip. Yeah, or like a love story where people break up and you just know that they're going to get back together. And so it's kind of like waiting for stuff to happen. Yeah, yeah, no. Instead of wondering mysteries. what is happening, what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Super duper good. Super neat. Okay, way good. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on being in either the autopilot or analysis mode. I think the subject is really fun and intriguing. Um, If you've gotten all the way this far to the end, thank you so much. I was shooting for a shorter video this time because of some comments I got from my evil sister. No, I understand. 45 minutes is a long time. But, you know, you gotta love it. Okay. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And have a good one. (laughs) And I love you. Bye. So cute. Thank you.